okay so welcome to my uh video today and i want to talk to you about keeping the bigger picture in mind and what does that even mean dr linda you're gonna ask right so you have to always keep the bigger picture in mind and specifically i want to con you down to the attitude of invest now and reap now or later right a lot of people don't think that way they feel like well um th this is what i want to do or i don't want to do this thing what is the gain in it anyways but don't always be short-sighted don't be short-sighted why because if you think of the bigger picture it may make it easier for you to be able to what decide on what to invest in now and i'm going to give you an example while i was in dental school right i am somebody that believes in if something is taught in class something is taught in class i would just like read the lecturer's notes right Le read the lecturer's notes and then go and write the exam if i do that i'm going to pass but i want to know more even if it means that that lecturer is not going to ask it in class a lot of students feel that for example if this lecturer has given you these notes if this lecturer has given you these notes that means they are not going to ask something outside of their notes even some lecturers will tell you i'm not going to ask something outside of my notes so because of that a lot of students will not go the extra mile to read anything outside of that um, lecturer's notes right but that's not me I'm going to go out, buy the textbooks now, buy the textbooks and read. However, my own was different because in dental school, textbooks are pricey. Whoa, like there were textbooks that I bought, there were thousands and thousands and thousands of naira. Okay, there were textbooks that I bought that were thousands and thousands of naira. I schooled, I did my undergraduate in Nigeria. So, so I will go out, I'll buy those textbooks. I remember sometimes there were times I was sitting at the bookstore because in dental school, we had this um, vendor that used to sell books, right? Called him OJ Links. <laughs> if you go, anyone who is watching this video that went to invest in me, they will laugh. They will be like, ah, Linda, you still remember. So he called him OJ Links. He had all the medical books, right? I was usually bought from him and the people selling for him so i'll go there i was sitting i'll be checking these books let's say something like anatomy right i'll buy anatomy textbook then i'll buy a second textbook then i'll buy anatomy atlas then i'll buy these and i'll buy that and i'll buy that a lot of my friends now i'm not talking about people who didn't have money to buy textbooks right i'm talking about people who had the money to buy the textbooks but felt that it was foolish to buy those textbooks because maybe this particular lecturer has told you that oh i'm not going to say something outside of my notes right so they felt like if if we read this textbook it will not help us pass the exam so there's no need to read the textbook but i'm like it may not help you pass the exam but something can happen this lecturer can be taken away from the school today another person comes and they have to say they have to go to the textbook right okay not just that if you have to treat a patient in the hospital you're not going to tell that patient that uh, well, this was not taught in class or that lecturer did not include it in his notes. You are going to, if you have to be an outstanding doctor, right? If you have to be an outstanding dentist, then, or dental surgeon, or whatever name you prefer, prefer, then you have to be able to go the extra mile, read the extra mile to be able to serve your patients better, right? And there were even some hidden, there were even some hidden advantages, right? From this behavior that I was doing. For example, because of the books I was reading, when I, or someone in my class say scores 50, I'll score 55. When someone in my class scores 60, I'll score 62. If another person in my class score 90, I'll score 95, right? If they top their game and score 95, I'll score 97, right? <laughs> so because of that attitude of not just depending on what the lecturer is saying, but going the extra mile to read in order to understand what is being taught. It made it easier for me that even when the lecturer tried to be tricky about their question, it was easy for me to understand. So this was one of my secrets that I was able to use to get high academic grades, right? But it meant that 
a lot of time i had to spend money that i would have otherwise used on clothes or otherwise used on food i would spend it on books and trust me some of my classmates actually felt like i was a big fool <laughs> so now the point is this why in the smaller context of that story it looks real it looks like she's a fool linda is a fool for buying extra textbooks right in the bigger picture i am not right and this was something i understood very very early and this is something some other people did not understand early that's why they made the mistakes that they made right so i understood this very very early and i was able to implement it now why we are still talking about books and writing ex writing to pass exam right then we get to the clinic that same person because they did not understand the topic so well they are not good doctors they are not good dentists right like their knowledge is shaky but let's even leave school arena for a while let's leave school arena for a while because i'm scoring higher because i'm reading multiple textbooks right what's going to happen oh, almost all the scholarships in school i'm talking of undergraduates i'm talking of nigeria so people feel that scholarships are not in nigeria right is it it's not true because i myself i went to school apart from the funding that my parents and my uncles gave to me right and my aunties will also support me Apart from those money, I was getting scholarship from um, the Federal Government of Nigeria, Chevry, uh, Chevron, Agbami, uh, I was an Agbami Chevron scholar. I got from Tony Elumelu fan. Um, sorry, not Tony Elumelu. Um, oh, oh. I've forgotten that name, but Tony Foundation, TFS or something. Tony Foundation scholar or something. Then um, there was this other one, um, Grace and Grace Gobadia. There are two names joined together, something go bad here, right? So, I, I have other small, small scholarships here and there. What's the point? The point is that why somebody in the same school is thinking, that, ah, you're a fool, you spend 5,000 naira, or you spend two dollars, you spend ten dollars to buy a textbook. That ten dollars that I spent brought in thousands or hundreds of dollars worth of scholarship, right? <laughs> and so now. If I'm not thinking of the bigger picture, all I would think about is that money I want to spend then and the stress of reading the book. But when you look at the bigger picture, you will see that if you spend that money, you get more return on investment. Ah, I'm talking too much. But then let me now even tell you, on the bigger, bigger, bigger story, because of, uh, because of my grade, because of all that things I was doing, um, leadership opportunities, volunteer experiences and all that and all that there are many things obviously because of all those things I was still able to get a get scholarship to go abroad to study by the time I graduated right <laughs> so you don't see that with this thing that looks small buying extra textbooks if you expand it and expand it and expand it it has so many things attached to it right but it's only the person that is thinking of the bigger picture that is going to think like this anybody who is not thinking of the bigger picture is going to think of i'm going to spend ten dollars to buy an extra textbook let me keep that money and let me not spend it and they'll call you that you're spending it a fool right but they don't know that even the money you spent you got it back multiple 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 so now in how does that apply to you this was my story how does that apply to you i noticed that some people some people, they, they, when they, even when they see something that will change their life, even when they see something that will help them, right? They will, they will be so focused on this small pain they will go through. They will be so focused, they will be like, ah, if I just save this money now, I'll just use it to buy jean. Like that one that Dr. Nida is wearing. They will not know that the jean I'm wearing, I didn't buy it at the time I wanted to go abroad to study. I didn't buy it. If I was buying the expensive clothes at that time, I won't even go anywhere. You see the point. Why I, I, I always say that when I was a, um, when I was practicing as a doctor, as a dentist, yeah, as a doctor as well, as a doctor at um, Lagos State University Teaching Hospital, right? I was paid, and I had to take out the, I take out twenty five thousand naira from my salary, and I saved the rest. Like I put myself on a specific amount per month, and I saved the rest. You know, some people they spend, then they save what is left. Instead, <laughs> instead, like I put myself on something small and then the rest is for keep. So I don't save what is left. I save then spend. You see the point? That was how, even though I was earning something small, I was able to gather money, gather money that I used to pay to agents. 
you know how that if you're following me you if you've been watching my videos you already know how that story went <laughs> right but i was able to gather money that i used to pay to agent i was able to gather money to do my application even before the scholarship now came that i was not looking for money to do medicals but i was able to gather money to pay for my visa application you understand? I already told the story that uh, somebody assisted me, borrowed me money to pay for my medicals when I was doing my visa application. You already know that, right? If you've been following me, you already know that. If you're if you're hearing for the first time, okay, well, you just heard it. But the point is, I was I was saving a lot from the small money that I was being paid. I was saving a lot in order to make these things happen. So people will come and tell me, I don't have money, I don't have money. Give me your class for free. Let's say the master class. I always tell them no. You know why? If we give you the master class for free, we haven't still helped you. If you finish the master class, you will have to pay for application. If truly you don't have money, then if truly you don't have money, our class is going to waste. Because even after we assist you, right? After we have assisted you, you will not have money to do the application. So it was all a waste. So why should we spend our time wasting time when you are not even ready? I will always tell those people, take one year off. Like, take one year, use it to work and save. Then you cannot come back and start the training. You see the point. This is why I don't, I don't believe that giving it for free to somebody is going to change their life. Because if truly they don't have money, then giving them the class for free is not going to change anything for them. Because they need more than just the money for the class, right? Now, it is also possible that they have some money, right? But they just say they don't have money. Then those people still don't deserve the class. Because if you have money and you kept it, but you just want us to give it to you for free. Then you don't deserve the class. So last, last, the person who is asking for it for free does not deserve it in any way, right? Anyway, but the, the real point I'm talking about today is how some people can be so focused on the micro thing that is happening now that they forget the big picture. What they forget is that, for example, let me use for example, we offer master class, right? That master class is way, 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 way less than $1,000. Way, way less than that. Now, if you... If somebody takes that class, they're able to apply for admission, they get the admission, they get the scholarship. That scholarship, let, I, I always use the example that University of Waterloo, minus my living expenses, so which my school still covered, my school and my supervisor still covered. Minus my living expenses, my university, the course I studied at University of Waterloo was uh or is $21,000 a year. And my master's, for example, was two years. So $21,000 a year for, for an international student times two years is what? $42,000. $42,000. So just by getting that scholarship, I've saved, I've gained, not even saved, I've gained $42,000 in my life. Of course, plus my living expenses and every other thing. But some people, they'll be so focused on the tiny amount of money that they lose sight of the bigger picture. The full scholarship and other things that comes with it, right? So, always focus on the bigger picture. People who don't learn how to focus on the bigger picture, they always miss out in life. Don't be like them. Always focus on the bigger picture. Always focus on the bigger picture, okay? So, in case, I hope that this word helped you today. But, do me a favor, share this video so that somebody else is going to actually learn from it. Because some people are suffering from micro focus. Some people they will focus only on this portion, just this portion. But there is a bigger picture. Open your eyes, you're going to see it. The whole thing is like big apple coming to change your life. Why are you focused here? And when you're focused here, you're only seeing this, you're only seeing this, you're only seeing this, you're only seeing this. So it doesn't make any sense to you. But the problem is that you are focusing on the micro things. You're not looking at the bigger picture. Don't lose the opportunity to spend little now, to invest little now, and reap. You will start reaping from now. This why, that's why I put reap now, and you reap now and later. So it's not just that. It's just. It's just. It's not just that. Um. It's not just that you're going to reap later, but you're going to start reaping from now. Because, you know why I said that? Some people think about like, oh, is it only when I get scholarship? Supposing I don't get scholarship. No. When you take our class, you will know the mistakes to avoid. 
the mistakes to avoid. Many people are spending so much money and they are not even getting results. You see somebody, for example, wants to do admission. Well, the first thing they do is the kind of mistakes I was about making, right? You go and register for IETS. You go and register for West Evaluation. Then you register for TOEFL. You won't even know that TOEFL and IETS are interchangeable, right? <laughs> because they are both English exams. <laughs> you register for IETS. You register for TOEFL. You register for GRE. You do your West Evaluation. By the time you finish, thousands of dollars, right? <laughs> you don't even know that. You don't need any. You see the point? So, that's why I say you reap now and you reap later. When you invest your money in our training, you reap now and you reap later because you know exactly what to do. So, because of that, you don't go about wasting time. You go straight and you hit it. And you hit it right. And even if you hit it and miss, you know what's going wrong. You know what to do to get it better. Right? You know the exams. You know that you don't need any exam. You know that you know the if you are going to even need any exam, you will know exactly when to write it. My dear, they will say wisdom, 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 wisdom. Common sense is so common that it's no longer common. Don't lose sight of the big picture. Don't lose sight, and you're focusing, focusing like this. Don't lose sight of the big picture. It's a big app. Very big. Very, very big. Don't lose sight of the big picture and you're focusing on just the stem, the leaf, or a portion of the fruit. Okay? Share this video. Thank you so much. Till I see you again. Bye. <laughs>